Alright guys, well last night we got most of the welding done. I still got a couple more welds on the bottom side of the trailer to uh, finish up. It's gonna happen at some point today. We did get a delivery for the trailer though. That's pretty sick. It's uh, one piece of the puzzle here. We've got the tires and the wheels that are gonna be going on this thing. I opted for black instead of like the standard trailer white. I didn't want to spend the extra money for like the boat trailer galvanized. So found these boogers pretty cheap on Amazon. It was like 160, $170 a pair. And obviously we're gonna be running a dual axle setup on this thing, cause that's just way cooler. So we've got the other two right there behind me. Now I'm waiting on uh, the hub kit to build the axles, the leaf springs and the spring hangers and all that, which I'm hoping show up in the next day or so. And then we can uh, you know, get the suspension built on this thing because we have to build a suspension to know how high this is gonna sit off the ground before we know how tall we wanna make the actual gooseneck part. That being said, uh, we're not gonna do that right now because Snow dropped his kid off to, uh, for me to babysit today. Is it lunchtime yet? You already ate, your dad fed you. Hate you. So I'm, I'm babysitting this guy today because his truck's getting worked on. We'll give you a tour of his truck at some point. He doesn't want it right now because it's dirty, but um, um, that, that's his new truck. Hold on, let's see, let's see what we can see right there. That, that, that's his new truck right there getting some work done on Sergio's, at Sergio's. Don't let him know we're watching. Okay. Yeah, do a good job. <laughs> Hi. So since Josh is actually a child and is very antsy and his ADD's kicking in hard, he needs to go do something. Don't, don't lick stuff. It's my lip. Oh, you're licking your lip? Maybe. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna take the mini truck. I actually gotta replace the sprinkler at the house. We're gonna go to like an irrigation supply place. Um, and Josh really wants to take the mini truck somewhere, so. Do I get to drive? No. Mom said you were teaching me to drive today. You're not ready for a manual. <sighs> I hate it here. <laughs> take it, do I need your booster seat? You got one? <laughs> yeah. Don't tell mom. Oh, we're going without the booster seat? Do you like how this thing has the biggest cup holder of any vehicle and it's the smallest vehicle yeah, ever? That screams we're getting a big gulp slurpee. <laughs> <laughs> she there. Well, we might be pump started. Batteries get a little low. <laughs> she, she's struggling. Come on, little girl. It knows that like I'm spending a ton of money building a trailer for it and it's like I'm just gonna die now So you're not even gonna have a vehicle to tow that trailer with says I want the attention. All right, so uh, She don't want to start right now. Hold on. Wait up, buddy. Jeez. Okay, put it in reverse. We're gonna bump starter. Josh is pushing. Be, be stronger Hold on squeeze through the door <laughs> oh, Hold on, I think the key had to be on <laughs> All right there we go. This thing, you can literally bump start this thing in like six feet. I'll give you another sneak peek of Josh's truck right there. Sneak peek, sneak peek. Don't show him. Don't show him too much. Big man. Big truck. Okay, buddy. We made it. There ain't no Slurpees here, though. I lied to you. Oh. Think we can have him load the sprinkler up? You got tie down straps? Yeah. It's going to be a one of these. So We're going to need to. We need like, the forklift to load us. The axles. Need. Yeah, yeah. Put the weight right. So now that we've practiced, let's go get the replacement. Yeah, let's go get the new one. Hopefully they have it. I think these. I think we'll fit through these. We should have just drove the truck in. That was an expensive trip right here. Expensive. You you want to deal with strapping this down or? Biden's America right here. Like, <laughs> See Josh. I get what my allowance. Stores like this is where people that with real jobs work. Not guys like you that just hang out on boats all day. You're welcome. <laughs> there we go. Oh yeah, yeah. I don't know. What do you think? Think at the 25 mile an hour limit, these will fly out. There you go. Look at this. Look at this skill right here tying this down. Oh, you've done this before. If that load shifts, we're screwed. We're, uh, we're gonna roll this thing. You know, what's life without a little uh, adventure, right? Yeah, there you go. Don't there you go. Off. Come on, start! Oh yeah, no problem. You know, we were joking about Josh's uh, tie-down abilities here, but this thing did not move an inch right now. We just did like a full lap because we thought we lost the Gen Y hitch off the back. They always think I'm messing around, like I don't know what I'm talking about. And Look at this, professional dude. Here we have it. You ever Presentation, thought of, usability. You ever thought about being a trucker? A couple times. You didn't even have to flick the strap and say it's not going anywhere. It just went nowhere. No, dude, I, I textbook day right here. Now with the uh, mini truck out of the shop, either we spin this 180 because I believe that side is the front of the trailer. And then we actually have the front facing the back of the mini truck. Um, or we pull the mini truck all the way in and we move the trailer to the back half. All right, Josh wants to do some some strongman competition stuff here. Look at this guy. Look at this guy. You're a beast, bro. Worst truck, nothing. 
Right. Don't, 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 don't drop it, don't drop it, don't drop it. I mean, I think if you can do this, this means the trailer is going to be light enough, you know? Even, even though we're going to add like another 500 pounds to it, but I think the mini truck will pull this just fine. There you go, there you go. Yep. Looking good, buddy. Looking good. Look at that. All right, now you're hired. All right. Yeah, that was a great first day. I don't pay you for the first day, though. Training. Training, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, y'all, I guess my day of uh, babysitting Josh, you know, who's left already, his truck's done, Sergio got everything. Uh, wired up with his train horn and stuff again. We'll do like a video on Josh's truck one day. I think he's super sick, lifted dually. The truck's just awesome. But in the meantime, we got some more stuff that just showed up. So we've got our leaf spring kit. I had originally talked about like just solid mounting these axles because this thing's not going down the road. It's literally gonna get pulled around the ranch to like project to project. It's, it's pr honestly probably not gonna move that much. Zach told me that'd be lame. So. I've never done any type of leaf sprung suspension, let alone from scratch-ish. We'll call it scratch-ish, because we do have um, the hanger kit in here, which comes with like the dual center pivot hanger, so we can mount these side by side. Now that I'm looking at it, they're kind of long. I'm hoping they're not like too long. I don't, I don't know, we'll see that in a second. And then I think, but I don't know, that might be our hub kit right there for the axles we're gonna end up building, so let's open that up. Oh yeah, I love the old box inside of a box. Like, we really, we couldn't just ship this box? I mean, I guess they're pretty heavy, so maybe they didn't want it to blow out. All right, let's see what we got. Oh, yeah, we got our hub and axle kit. Look at that. Oh, look at that. Got our bearings, our seals, everything. Looking rad. So basically, I was looking to get axles for this thing, um, but I wanted this thing to be as wide as the mini truck. And to find narrow trailer axles that aren't like really cheap weird ones for like an ATV trailer or something. Wasn't that easy. So I found these kits right here, which basically you take, hold on, ugh. well you assemble this whole assembly like so. And then all you do is you find the tubing that this fits inside of and you slide that on and you weld that around. What that does is you get to select the size of tubing that you want. And um, so basically we can make whatever size axle we want off of this kit. So. Pretty cool setup. I'm gonna go ahead real quick, finish welding all this underside. We'll get it flipped over and then uh, let's start to play with figuring out how to build a leaf spring suspension setup because we've never done that. Okay, through the power magic of uh, editing and cameras and whatever, she's all welded up. Now, typical trailers that I've seen, like, well, like bigger trailers, they have two center frame rails that run down that usually ties into the tongues. Um, and that's what your suspension is built off of, which ends up bringing your suspension in um, if you're going like deck over style, I should say. Let me clarify, this is deck over style here. And that keeps the wheels underneath the trailer versus um, like a lot of car hauler trailers you'll see where the wheels are actually off to the side here and then they have like fenders that go over top. I prefer deck over style. I prefer the trailer to sit up a little higher, but I don't know what I'm gonna do to actually mount the leaf springs because I'm not gonna run two giant center frame rails. There's just no point in spending that kind of money on the steel considering this thing's not gonna tow, you know, a million pounds. So we got Sergio here for, uh, he's gonna give us some advice. What? You got me? Yeah, sure. Okay, where, how would you mount the leaf springs? Oh, I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got a little bit of a conundrum here. So these are the mounting brackets for the leaf springs. These are the little baby leaf springs. Right? So this whole axle setup that I got here, once we build the axles off of those boogers right there, they're gonna be 3,500 pound a piece axles. So we're talking about 7,000 pound trailer, assuming my welds hold up. Now, these are the spring hangers. Again, we're working on the bottom of the trailer here. So we either like just hug right there and we weld that on and we call that good. And then the wheels stick out and it doesn't really look like a deck over. Or I take like some of that uh, one and a half by three inch material over there and I just like run a section of it inside and then that's where our wheel tire setup goes and our tires will sit essentially about right there. We gotta make sure, you know, we calculate, you did the calculation on the computer for the tongue weight plus the aerodynamics times pi. You always got a times pi. Oh, see, I forgot that. So here's the way I think we should do it if we're gonna do it a deck over style. We'll just take a piece of metal again, where you right here just had a scrap of the one and a half by three. We use that as like kind of a little subframe, and then it doesn't need to go the whole length. So let's see if we actually put one of these together, how long we're talking of a span. So these, oh, dang, these are bigger. These are bigger than I thought. Use that? I believe that's how that goes together. I have no idea. Oh shoot, Doug, can you grab me another one of those brackets? 
And then we get our second side here. I don't, apparently I only grabbed one of these. I need two of these boogers. And again, I believe that goes like that. Now I have not read the instructions at all, so this could be completely wrong. Good one. Dog, we died, we died. Good one. Okay, so I don't really, I'm assuming you center that, which would be there-ish. Jeez, five foot two. It's about the distance we need to mount up two tires to this thing. Our axle would be about right there with our hub. Whereas we need to be, yeah, it'd probably be four inches or so higher that we need to be to be able to clear that. I don't think it's gonna be a deck over, man. That might clear, but here. I think we could lift that and put it on there. This whole thing? Yeah. Oh! Jesus. Oh. I don't know if I got it, but I might have it. And I grabbed it in a bad spot. It's probably another four inches from there or probably. so. Why'd you have to get some? Such big tires. <laughs> I thought they'd be cooler to be bigger. They're bigger than the freaking mini truck, but the 13s looked way cooler than the 12s. All right, y'all, I hate to say it, but I don't think she's gonna be a deck over without some like extensive subframe build. Cause I still don't think we have enough height right there with coming up five and a half inches right there. So I don't think it's enough. Okay, so we've been going back and forth, racking our brains here on how exactly we wanna do this. This will be the simplest setup right here. We just weld it to the existing perimeter frame here. Um, I know it's not how traditional trailers are done, but it would get done just like so. Assuming she's gonna sit something like this, some, somewhere along those lines, which will then either go top or bottom. I hope we can mount these U-bolts on the bottom. That way we get a little more height out of her. So after a lot of back and forth, a lot of thinking, um, I think this is kind of our setup here. To me, those tires are really far apart but that's just kind of where it ends up sitting. Um, I mean, this needs to scoot over a little bit, but if you go center of leaf spring, center of leaf spring, uh, we're a little far apart, right about there, and right about there. Okay, well that one's just gonna roll away, but um, I think that looks a little far. But Granted, like, I don't know what size tire setup this leaf spring setup is for, so we just kind of have to go where the leaf springs are gonna set the axles. Now, distance wise on where to put this on the trailer, I found some calculators where it's like, well, you calculate the tongue weight versus the overall weight of the trailer and this and this and this and this. Well, we're obviously not gonna like take this thing to get weighed before the axles and leaf springs are put on, um, nor are we gonna sit there and calculate tongue weight and all that. So we're not worried about that. I found another calculator that said you take the length of the trailer minus the tongue, multiply that times 0.4, and that gives you the distance off the back of the trailer as to where the axle needs to be if you're a single axle or off the back of the trailer to the center uh, where um, the center of the leaf spring should be. So I just realized my math was just, just a hair off there. So we're gonna use my Construction Master Pro, which if you guys don't have this app, highly recommend any type of construction, you should have this. Times 0.4, yeah. So we're gonna take 12 feet, right? See how we got a little feet right there? Times 0.4 equals four foot nine and five eighths. We're gonna get some dinner. So in the morning, if we're gonna come back, and we're gonna, we're gonna get all this dialed in. So we'll see you guys in the morning. Well guys, I kind of royally screwed up here when it came to ordering parts for this trailer axle building thing that I thought was gonna be a great idea. So we have our, I'm gonna call it spindle, even though it's like part of the hub. I don't really know the correct term for this, but this basically slides into the axle. That right there is inch and three quarters outside diameter. So it needs to slide into a piece of tubing that is inch and three quarters on the inside. Now, here's where uh, things get a little funky. The leaf spring kit that I ordered is for, uh, you know, 3,500 pound axles. And it was like $20 more than the 2,000 pound axles. But they didn't really mention what changes. And well, what changes is the actual diameter of the axle. So this is a U-bolt for the leaf springs that goes on a two and three eighths inch axle. Now, if you go to mate the two together, you will see that you need an axle with an outside diameter of two and three eighths and an inside diameter of inch and three quarters, which is like three eighths wall thickness. That's a very expensive piece of tubing. So we're not gonna do that. So instead I've decided, okay, we're gonna use two and three eighths axles, which is a standard 3,500 pound trailer axle, I have found out. And then we're gonna make reducer sleeves that go inside there to inch and three quarters, and then we'll weld everything together and be good. Uh, problem is I can't find two and three eighths trailer axle by three sixteenths wall thickness anywhere. I'm at my second, third location here. We're gonna just keep driving around town. But first we're gonna go meet up with our friend Cowboy. He was generous enough to actually make my sleeves for me that are gonna 
make my reducers for these axles, so let's go get those from him right now. Look at this official guy right here. Look, we can't even show where you work. This is like, it's not I, feel like I feel like I'm gonna get arrested for being in this parking lot right no. now. Government secrets are getting exposed. Look at that. Thanks, buddy. Absolutely. Let's see, let's see if there's a fit, or we're gonna have to shave it down. Oh, oh, that's a fit right there. Love it. Y'all, this quest to find these freaking tubing for axles has been insane. So we are over here at East County Trailer Repair. Uh, you can see their sign right there. And they've been generous enough to be like, dude, here, let's just try and switch you over to square tubing, which was my original plan. And then I got all crazy and decided round tubing axles. I don't really know. So they gave me a U-bolt kit here, which hopefully works for my church, which hopefully works for my leaf packs to convert us over to two inch square tubing. And then we'll get rid of the round U-bolts. I think I could slide my little spindle thingies into the square tubing, weld them up and still be good. We're gonna find out, but huge shout out to the guys over at East County Trailer Repair um, for basically telling me just take this and try it. Don't pay us until you know it's gonna work. So that's super awesome. If you guys are ever uh, you know in need of some trailer repair, hit these guys up. We're going back to square tubing here. So this is two inch square tubing. New U-bolts that we got and hangers. Hold on, get in there, get in there. All right, so that'll made up to our leaf spring setup that we have here. Now this is where things are gonna get a little bit funky. That fits inside there real nicely. Um, granted, you have some play and you have some gas, but I think what we could do is we could weld that up all the way around. In my mind, we should pop a couple of holes in the square tubing here and actually weld through from that way as well, but I feel like, like that's kind of a viable option right there. Okay, now we just gotta go back to our friends over at JC Metal Supply and uh, get the square tubing that we're gonna use in. Uh, Let's actually make some progress today. You ready for me, buddy? What's up, brother? <laughs> <laughs> this is what we need right here. How'd you know? Nah. <laughs> We're back to try again, Christian. We got this. We're gonna mm. figure this out. I need square tubing that this kind of fits inside of. This is eighth inch? Yeah, eighth inch. And that's as, as thick as, as you can go, because if you do three eighths, it's not gonna. But do you have three sixteenths? Three sixteenths. Cause I could shave. I can bring in. Uh, I could shave this down if I uh -huh. had to. All right, guys. So we've decided. We've got our two by two here, eleven gauge. We, I wish we could go thicker. Then we're shaving down the spindles. This should be plenty. We're not putting a million pounds on it. And worst case scenario, because I talked to Zach before I made this decision, um, he's like the only thing that would really happen is like the axle would bend in the center. And if we got to like take a piece of angle and weld it down this thing to strengthen it, then we'll do that. But I don't foresee any issues. So. Christian's gonna get us pre-cut here uh, a little bit longer than what we think we need the axles to be. That way, once we actually get everything in place, we can be like super precise. Then we're gonna be using some two by four material, which is uh, right up there. It's actually this material right here, but this is galvanized. We're not using galvanized because we're probably gonna get this whole trailer powder coated. So we're gonna be using that to build our whole gooseneck tongue attachment. I got it, I got it. And like clockwork, we got our delivery. Yeah, it's a good call, Christian. <laughs> I think bigger would have been, it would have looked weird. Yeah. All right, y'all, Zach is here. We got, we got some real brains on this operation. I figured Chris would be here, you know, between me and Two Idiots Garage, we could have got something done, but. Chris is sleeping. Oh, it's past his bedtime. So we're getting the hub assembly assembled here with the bearings in it. That way everything sits nice and center. Ooh, look at that, look at that. That was genuine Chinese bearings right there. So is it, does it cause corona instead of cancer? Is that... That's a good question. See what happens when I let you do your thing? What? At like four in the morning and order parts. I got, are you, you proud? all the wrong stuff. Are you proud of how far I got though? <laughs> you know, I got to this far. <laughs> Something I learned a long time ago is, the most important thing is knowing when to ask for help. Now here's a question for you, Zach. Yeah, well, I'll tack it all on and then we can actually flip the trailer, put weight on and make sure you like it. Okay. Like it, we don't have to burn it on it to move it around. So we're gonna go three inches. Was that the big one too? I didn't measure the big one. Yup. And just so we have something on the sides here. 29 three quarters. So if we pull off of that side to there, it should be end to end 29 three quarters. Yep. All right. All right. The other hanger and this one, same thing. 29 three quarters. And we just we just go by feel on this way. I feel like there's enough play in the springs. I mean, we can measure out and make a cross and I just line it up with the center line of that, but I mean, I think for this application, pretty much right there is good enough. You think the old eyeball? Okay, the eyeball 3000. What you been doing to this part? I, I went know. to like roll it and it's like... 
Yeah. I like it a little loose, you know? I really just flow the welds out when it's loose. Right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Okay, now we can actually assemble this without it wanting to fall off. Okay, I'm watching my eyes. Now, should I tighten anything or like are we not it's getting those back to, out? It's meant to be like sloppy. Okay, it's a trailer, quarter inch. So my buddy Zach told me. I'm telling you, dude. <laughs> Measure your big trailer, quarter inch. Okay, okay. Oh yeah, buddy, we nailed it. Look at that. That's some genuine articulation. Alrighty, we'll get these temporarily held in place. This will help us get our axle width measurement here. Well, we can just grab it, set it on there, and kind of shove it until each side's equal and see where it's at. <laughs> I feel like we should mount a wheel to that. Shove it this I way. Put, we, can, we can put just you know next to the pin, make sure pins, you know, were centered and right. measure out from end to pin, end to pin. This is like the stupid way to do it. So what we're trying to clear is obviously when we have the tire on here, the tire's gonna come in. We wanna make sure we got plenty of clearance here between the springs as well as to allow for a little flex and deviation and articulation. And Ryan tells it with a flat tire. Or, or Zach says when I tow it with a flat tire. <laughs> never done that before. Zach, I like mounting these a lot better than 40s. You've never mounted a set of 40s. 35s. I still like these better. Like, I like it right where it's at. Hit it. Yeah. Oh, so you have to f figure out that that's going to stretch. If the tire was here like they usually are, the sidewall's right at the bolt, so you don't ever want it to come close. Yeah. Because it will pop a tire. <laughs> Fair. Because I mean, even so, right now where it's set up, all the weight would be in the back. So, like, say you're going through a dip with the tank over the axles, and it's just this corner and that corner. Yeah. That's where you're going to get. It's actually going to hit like that and compress a little bit more. So we're about a worst case scenario is where we're sitting. We're pretty close to worst case. I'm happy with that, if you're happy with that. <laughs> 61 and a ninth, it was just a hair fat. <laughs> All right, we did it, buddy. We got two axles. Really, guys, if you don't have a cold saw and you do this kind of stuff, buy one. All right, y'all, so right now we're marking where the holes are going to be for the bolt on the leaf pack there to sit into the actual axle itself. So we got all these marked. Now we drill. Yeah. The lighting in here sucks. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> Jesus guy. What the f was that? <laughs> oh my god. I can't hear no more. Good lord. I've been like welding around explosive stuff this whole time. Like, I always think how lucky I get. I thought that was it. I thought that was, I thought that was it. White light, meet Jesus. Well, I was just excited because I finally got one to drill all the way through with the worn out step hit. And then it exploded. Yeah, that one took a little bit. I, I didn't think, like I threw it, I'm like. <laughs> rolling closer to you, I'm like, oh no. <laughs> All righty, let's see if our holes work and everything lines up. I'm happy, you happy? Yeah. We're like, okay. we're halfway to axles now. Okay, okay, we're looking good. Hey, look at that. Hold on. Well, you, you wanna stand on one side and I'll stand on the other one, we'll bounce. Look at it, look at it. Look at the rhythm. Uh, uh. <laughs> so the or issue we, we just ran into. Just... Yeah. Cut a little bit off it. I think that's our ticket. So, You're gonna need the eraser. We didn't, we didn't really account for the fact that there's a bolt right there, which when you go to slide this in the tube, it's gonna hit the bolt, so it only goes that far in, whereas when we were messing with it earlier, it slid in no problem, and I'm gonna say that's probably too far out for my liking there. Magnifico, okay, so everything's cut, everything fits. Now we just gotta get everything kinda last minute dialed in here. And Zach, I got a question for you, buddy. How do we keep it like from having any kind of oh jeez, just walking out, talking out. The sloppy. From having a little little droopy droop. How do we square that up, this, or this, we just eyeball that? This, this droopy droopy. Yeah. We kind of eyeball it. Okay. okay. <laughs> Precision at its finest. We are gonna eyeball it. So now we're just gonna pop a couple holes. Boom, 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 boom. So uh, old Zachariah over there can rosette weld it. So obviously we're gonna route or plug weld. Yeah, because. 
he's gonna weld around the edge there, fill all that, fill all that, but we also wanna make sure we really get penetrated somewhere further back there. So we're just gonna pop a few random holes here, allegedly. Simultaneously. Oh, you want to talk about it before we take our feet off it? All right. I was just watching it go right for the ball of my ankle, and I'm like, I hope that does not hit. No, it, it, it got my big toe. Oh. All right, all right. Oh. oh. Okay, it's just zeroed. Zero. Oh, oh, zero. <laughs> the Milwaukee marker coming in perfect. But you got to get right on the the cap stopper. Okay. And then we'll roll it over, do the same thing. Oh, you went too much. Did oh, I? Nope. We're perfect. within a tenth. It'll suck up whatever. Okay, it. perfect. We use my thwacker here to beat her down into, I don't know, like parallel ish. Did you, did you just say you used your whacker to beat it down? My thwacker. Oh. Thwacker. Yeah. yeah, there's no innuendos with thwacker. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> don't mind how I'm holding this four by. Um, Not to scale. Not to scale. <laughs> All right, y'all, well, everything is tacked up in place here. We've got tape on there to protect everything so we don't get splatter all over and the bearings will still work. Zach, you ready, buddy? These welds are like, this is all or nothing right here. Oh, that's heck of a fingers crossed. Round peg into square hole, take one. If nothing more makes you feel better, you're the best welder in the shop right now. Best motivational speech I got right now, it's late at night. <laughs> It looks and good. Well, it's super hot to where like the, the thick metal is going to like crack off the top. Yeah. That, that's what you're more worried about than splitting the tube. Is it not technically something thick you keep preheat? So like if we were to hit that with a torch, get it hot and then weld it, it's a lot better. You did a pretty good job there, buddy, of sealing her up. As uh, Ryan told me we're putting round things square holes. Ever tell you I didn't get past kindergarten? We got enough straps to strap one axle down. <laughs> All right, she's still a little warm here, but we're gonna put these hubs on. Try to not burn myself. Oh, get on there straight. Start over, start over. There you go, there you go, yep. Looking better. All right, there we go, one side on. So again, we're not gonna be able to get both set up today because we only had one uh, U-bolt kit there, but this will get us enough to get it flipped over and just kind of start to actually get a visualization of what this thing's gonna look like. Okay, buddy, ready to go for the flip? Yeah, I'm getting tired. You wanna like, set it up on the jack stand? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> testing those tack welds right now, Zach. Oh, they're tack up here. You wanna see if you can make it in the studio? Need no jack where we're going. I mean, looking at this right now, we're looking great. Straight. We ain't winning no NASCAR races, that's for sure. Well, they usually don't pick up the NASCAR with Keep in mind, lengthwise, obviously, there's going to be another axle tire there. Plus, we still got over five foot that's going to go off of the actual gooseneck. So, you know, that's, that's kind of center, but the tongue weight and the gooseneck and tabulations of the calculations well, I mean, times pi. Ryan made the trailer and then went, I need springs and axles. <laughs> and he's like, oh crap, the springs are long. The springs and were a little longer than I anticipated. It pushes everything back. Like, what are you going to do? Put the wheels at the very back? Like, that, that's going to look weird too. Yeah. Trying to mimic it like an actual gooseneck and they're never all the way in the back. Well, we Unless also... Unless it's a semi-trailer, then they're all the back. We, we also decided to turn a little trailer into a gooseneck. Thanks to you guys. We said that'd be a cool idea, and then I'm like, well, that would be cool, even though it's way more work, and then we're totally not gonna use the hitch that we just put on the mini truck. But regardless, 
we will use a hitch. So like we're, we're getting close. We're getting close. So in the next video, we'll get the rear wheels and axles and everything on. We'll start building the gooseneck, but we got to call it. This video has been long enough. It's been over the last couple of days. Shout out to everybody that helped out. Zach, thank you. Cowboy, uh, Christian over at uh, JC Metal Supply. Thank you guys. Y'all are the best. But with that, we gotta wrap up. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. If you're not subscribed already, please click the subscribe button now that you do not miss out on any future content. Don't forget to give this video a like, aka a thumbs up. Don't forget to check out workforapparel.com because if there's anything you want in this life, you gotta be willing to work for it. You guys are the best. Roll the outro. Damn. Uh. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Uh.